Hi guys, welcome back to part two of the Wally build. Today we're going to be taking apart this guy, replacing him with some upgraded motors, and building one of the arms. Let's get started. Jen here is going to uh, put the new motors in, and me and I'm going to build the, one of the arms for Wally, it looks like. So these are all the parts we have for the arm. I did have to reprint these. These are the uh, parts that go on the servos on the inside of the robot for where it twists right at the hinge here. I had to rebuild these because the first ones were printed at too low of infill and they all broke off like instantly. So we reprinted those with 100% on those parts and the rest of it is all at 15%. Alright, you want to help me put this arm together? Okay. Nice. Am I taking apart the whole thing? Yeah, I might need some help. Am I taking apart these? Uh, yeah, you got to take the, these two off first. Okay. So you, got, you take the two uh, motors off first because that's the easiest because you have to be able to like, get in there and pop the gears out. And that's gonna it's kind of a pain to get the gears in and out, so that's going to be... The next hard part. Okay, so I got. We're gonna lose some Raspberry Pi soon. So this thing has the whole bolts right here, hold the motor on. I'm just gonna go ahead and take those apart. Seems sturdy. What we have here is this is the arm part on the Wally. This is the piston. And this needs to go inside. So Sydney here is gonna show us how to do that. So it goes in there and. Yep, and then you push that. This is the uh, collar right here, which we'll glue in once we paint everything, but that just holds it so this arm can't come out past that. Um, I think these two spots here are just so... I'm actually honestly really not sure what these two weird holes here are for, but they are in it on the print off the one we're actually building off of, so we're just going to leave them there. Um, next up, she's going to assemble the hand. So these are the, all the finger pieces, and then here's the axle for it, and then this is the part that actually hooks on to the rest of the arm. So she's going to put the middle finger on first, or actually I guess this there going to be the thumb here, so she's going to put the thumb on first. If you think about it, I thought it went this way at first, but that obviously doesn't make any sense, so you have to put it like this. It's kind of weird, but that's how it looks like it works, so... <laughs> okay. She is an experienced engineer, um, so she knows what's going on. Okay, so, this part's off. Um, the wires are still attached, so that's going to be interesting to figure out. Wires just, wire just pull right through. Pull right through. Alright, I know what's going on. I'm not entirely sure they do. And also, on the design, depending if you use uh, motors with encoders or not, you might have to cut a bigger hole like I did for this. Um, there we go. Look at that. So, just be aware of that before you try to put everything together. I lost some nuts. Careful. I found them all. Okay. We're good. Everything's good. Okay. Everything's golden. This is a lot of stuff going on with this thing, I think. So, there's the motor you can see here. That guy right there is the encoder. So, yours may or may not have that. This allows you to have a little bit more option. Are you going to do a little unboxing? Yeah, so these are the new motors right here. Um, these are just a higher RPM one. Those are, I think, like 35 RPM or so. These are like 160. We're also not using the motors that are spec for this, so we're going to see how these higher, higher RPM motors do in terms of torque. Um, these, I think, have about somewhere around, like, a one-seventh of the power of the recommended ones. So we're going to see how that works out. I'm not sure if these will be able to drive it very well. But also, this thing's super top-heavy, so it can't really go any inclines anyway, so it's going to have to be stuck on flat ground. So I don't think we're going to have any major issues there. But uh, we will find out. So then, next up to actually take these, there's some bolts in here. One of these is kind of weird to get to. If you use an Allen key, you might not have to bend your screwdriver. But take them out the way I do. You have to kind of bend the screwdriver. So once he's done with that, I'll grab that screwdriver and we can dismantle that. Um, also, as you can see, these motors are quite a bit longer. Um, so hopefully we have enough clearance for that. I didn't, I didn't check that. So we'll have to, we're going to hope. That actually works. <laughs> you want to you 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 check that actually? <laughs> you can kind of see this one is hanging up just a little bit past the edge, so if I line this one up the same way, looks like we'll have just enough room to do two of these. Uh, well, actually, we should be fine. We'll be. Yeah, looks like hopefully. <laughs> we're pretty close. It'll be close, yeah. So, not the hard way, I guess. These ones, we got these ones because they're a little more, they're a little bit higher torque. Um, this is actually the same motor we used on our battle bot that we burned up. So these motors are not rated for much anything that's very hard on them. But hopefully for this application it'll be okay. So 
So, do you want to paint this one? No. Okay. All right. So, Sydney is also going to paint this while we're out of here. So, we'll take everything back apart again. I guess probably should have showed you guys before I tore it all back apart. Um, but I did have I did have to use some sanding on some of this previous to this. Um, did a little bit of sanding on the arm here. For the majority of what we're doing here, you're going to see a lot of the three printing lines, and I don't really care for what we're doing. This isn't going to be like a super nice showbot or anything. It's just going to be kind of a cool little side project. But you can see here that all the fingers and everything move. The arm has the ability to come out. Um, it'll also have the ability to twist back and forth. And then the servo will be able to move it up and down. Might eventually add some more servos so that we can move this in and out manually. But we'll see if I ever get around to that. So I'm going to grab the paint. It doesn't fit through very well. Go oh, back to our little square. Second lock. Quick disassembly on this. Uh, there's one bolt up there, one more bolt right over there. And that just comes off and it pops apart. Alright, and then once we've done that, see that it's see if it's loose or not. Um, there's also two like grooves that this motor kind of fits into in the back as well. Um, so you kinda gotta kinda um, wiggle it back and forth to get it pop out of those. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here in a minute. Okay. So once we've done that, we're gonna kinda hold it here, kinda wiggle it back and forth until it pops out of those. And kinda twist it like that is the best way to kinda get it out and, and to put it in. Just kind of twist it in like that. Um, so anyway, so as you can see here on the front, there's these two edges that kind of stick into the chassis as well. So you have to kind of wiggle it in and out. Um, and then after that, so now this gear doesn't have any set screws or anything on it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and pop the gear off. So to do that, I just use a flathead, kind of stick it here, wedge against the motor, and kind of go around it and just push on each side until it's loose enough so I can pop it off. There we go. And that guy is off. I couldn't. Make. So it just slides right back out. Okay. So we're going to install the gear on the motor now. So make sure that you're facing the right way with the collet sticking down. I want some water. Oops. And slide that guy right on there. Make sure it's nice and good on there. I'm going to compare it against the old motor. Um, so it looks like it was just just about a tiny bit up from the edge of the key. So it's stuck on there, so we're going to go with that. That looks good enough. Okay, so that motor's back in, so now we're just going to go ahead and finish screwing it in. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and test it now. Um, we've got a little 2S battery right here. It's like 7.4 volts, so we're just going to go ahead and plug that directly into the two, the black and red pin, which are the power pins for the motor. So we're going to go ahead and plug in... Um, it doesn't really matter if you plug in black to black or black to red in this case because the motor's going to go one way or the other. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and test this out though. Hopefully it'll spin on the table. Yep, so it looks like it does indeed work. Cool. Okay, so the paint's well on its way. We got two motors reassembled with the big boys. You can see here they're much longer. That one just getting finished up. How much do they work out? I'm gonna go ahead and test this one real quick as well, just to make sure that both these are working fully. I'm gonna get ready to slap them back together. It's fun 
for the whole family. So which way does this go? Uh, come on, boy. Not that way. Cool, so they both do work. Rebag up the old motors because we're going to be sending these back. Um, hopefully, we'll take them back. We did put a little bit of paint on them, but thankfully, Amazon takes anything back. So, All right, so we got the robot all back together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi the rest of the way so we can go ahead and actually fully test this robot finally. We're going to show you some of the electronics that go into building this Wally. Um, so number one is the Arduino, which powers the motors and everything. Then we have a Raspberry Pi for the Flask server, and then you have some sort of motor controller that's going to control the two motors on the bottom of this. So you can use like a full-blown motor controller, like a shield for the Arduino. But we are not going to for this because all I have is this um, one that has Grove connectors on it and these are not very easy to use and they're hard to find these connectors so like only one place supplies them. So we're going to be using this which is 2.5 amps per channel. Hopefully that's enough and we won't blow it up but we will find out. So you can use like a full blown motor controller, like a shield for the Arduino. But we are not going to for this because all I have is this um, one that has Grove connectors on it and these are not very easy to use and they're hard to find these connectors. So, like only one place supplies them. 
So we're going to be using this, which is 2.5 amps per channel. Hopefully that's enough and we won't blow it up, but we will find out. For installing these, we're going to be wanting to put them on the sides in here, because if we lay them on the inside, it's just going to get really jumbled up. Um, I also want to have a nice open space so we can get in here when the top's on and everything. So we're going to put everything on the sides, so that'll be on the side there. The Arduino is going to be somewhere over here, and then this will be over there somewhere. We built these cool mounts that we're going to mount. This one here mounts the Arduino and the motor controller that we have, so it'll set up just like this pretty much for that one. And then for the Raspberry Pi, we also have one, which will go like that. All right, so I got the uh, Raspberry Pi mounted up, and I also got the Arduino with the motor controller mounted up. All right, so it's a little bit hard to see. I don't have a great mount for my camera, but we can now test fit all the parts here. So I'm gonna put this one in this way. Um, there we go, that one fits on there pretty nicely. And then we'll put the other one in here. This one here is gonna fit, just go in just like that. Um, we have all the connections here kind of face towards the inside. I also have a special right angle one here, but it looks like with the spaces here, you might be able to just put a normal one. For the Raspberry Pi, I would probably recommend a 90 as well, because there's not that much space unless you get like a kind of flimsy cord. Um, so that one will also. All right, so as you can see here, fits nice and tight. We can also still access for the most part. We can still kind of access anything in here if we really need to. All right, so on the Arduino here, we have our motor controller. Um, we got most of it wired up here. The two outside pins are PWM pins for the right and left motor. Um, this will be the right motor and the left motor here. The two insides are en enables, and so if you have a high high on here and a low on here, then it's going to go either forward or backwards. And if you switch that, it'll switch directions, and if you have either, if then both one or zero, the motor will be stopped. Um, so we do have to make some changes to the code and that guide we're following if we want to use these. Otherwise, if you run the other ones, you can leave it how it is. Alright, so we got to do some serious uh, wire cleanup right now while it does appear to work. You can see we can drive him around here. He doesn't have a reverse for some reason either, so I gotta figure out what's up with that. But at least he does have a little bit of power. So, and you can even see uh, the little battery voltage meter definitely drops right now with uh, the motors we have on there, so I think we're gonna put a little bigger batteries. But he can can push some stuff and everything, so that's pretty cool. As you can see, if I push him back there with a kind of a box full of stuff, easily pushes that forward. So that means those motors do work pretty good for this. So I think we'll end this episode on this.